We begin today with just a couple of corrections. So the first correction is actually referring to something on page 72. I made a mistake when I typed some stuff up. So if we jump to page 72, we need to make a change. The equation should say x plus y equals 6. So let's find that equation on page 72. Okay, here it is right here. Right there, number one, we see it close to the top. It says x plus y equals 10, make it x plus y equals six. Okay, and then Katrina thinks she's found an error in the answer key, so let's make a note of that. So in the homework assignment right up above, for number one, Katrina's answer is 34 over 27 and 19 over 27. But the back of the book says something different, and Katrina has also checked it, um, typing it into some web page, and the web page agreed with her answer. So there's a very good chance that the answer key in the back of your book for this one is wrong. Okay, if I didn't get to check your homework before class today, we'll do it uh, when everybody's working on the group activity. So I'll check in a little while. Everybody has the two corrections? Okay, thank you, Katrina. So we think that this is the right answer. If you look in the answer key, you'll see something different. Yeah, yeah. It's also possible the book made a typo on the problem like I did here. Okay, so when we're ready, we'll go back a few pages to, I think it was 68 that we were on, 64 that we're on. So we're here at the bottom of page 64, and just a couple of quick announcements. First of all, the deadline for the GCC Foundation Scholarships is approaching. It is March 11th. It will be here soon. If you haven't applied already, I would encourage you to throw your name in the hat. Only GCC students are eligible. There are tens of thousands of dollars that are going to be given to the very few people who apply to these scholarships. So apply. Uh, earlier today, two people told me that it took about 30 minutes to do the application process. And that's not 30 minutes for each scholarship. It's 30 minutes once, and you just check the boxes for the scholarships that you're applying for. OK? Any questions on that? OK. Next, we have our calendar. Last class, we talked about solving systems, that is more than one equation, by graphing. What did we see when we drew two lines for most of the examples last time? The point where they meet. That's what we were looking for. When you have two lines, you look for the point of intersection, point where they meet. That's the solution. Today, we'll talk about an algebraic way, actually two algebraic ways, to solve the same kinds of problems. And it's nice because, number one, you don't have to draw anything, and number two, as soon as you start drawing, you're going to be approximating the answer. And we're going to come up with methods here that are purely algebraic, which means there's no approximations. We're going to get the exact answers every time. And the next two classes, we'll talk about uh, word problems, applications of systems. And then, let's see, I don't have the dates up here. Let's scroll over. So uh, on March 11th, we'll have our review day for our very first test, which is March 13th. That's a week from Wednesday, okay? One week from this Wednesday is our first test. Again, the difference between the tests and the quests is that the test is on everything we've done for the year. The quests were on smaller sections of the semester. There are review problems in the packet, lists of topics that I'd like you to know just like before. Yeah, good. All right, so that will be here again before you know it. That's coming up Wednesday next week. Any questions on the calendar? Okay, then we'll come back down here to the bottom of page one, and we'll start with Aaron. Can you read number one, please? Thank you. We're going to skip a few things during the packet because I want to make sure that there's enough time to do the group thing at the end of the semester. Uh, sorry, at the end of class today. So let's jump to number two. Katrina. OK. 
Okay, so here's the graph. The vertical tells you the height of the balloon in feet. The horizontal tells you how many minutes it's been since noon. So let's jump down here to the next sentence. From the graph, identify the coordinates of the intersection point, include units. So, and we write big parentheses here, look for the intersection point, write down two numbers in the parentheses, and also write down units for each number. Okay, did everybody get the numbers? 16, 2200? Is that okay? And then we can write the units. What are the units for the 16? Minutes, specifically minutes since noon. And then for the 2200 is feet. That's the height. Okay, so what's happening at that point? Uh, so first, 16 minutes means it's what time? 16 since noon, so 1216. And at 1216, where's Linda? Yeah, she's at 2,200 feet off the ground, which is exactly the same height that Peter is off the ground. Is Linda going up or down? Linda's going up. Peter? Down. But at that one particular moment is where they have the, exactly the same height, right? Peter started way up high. Linda started down low. At some point, they pass each other vertically, and that's the moment where they're exactly the same height. Super. Let's see if we can find equations for each of these two graph lines. So this is going to be some work. We've got to find the equations of the lines. So maybe the easiest thing to find first are the vertical intercepts. So I'll put two dots there, and let's make sure we can just write down the numbers of the, at those two dots. What's the first one, the bottom one? That's 600. You can put a zero in the front, absolutely. And the top one is 3,000. It's already labeled. So far, so good. We have the vertical intercepts. Usually, we call them the y-intercepts. What's the other thing we need to find? Slope. Now, it's totally OK to find the slope, for example, by picking the bottom green point and this red point and think about rising and think about running by just counting boxes. But I want to discourage you from doing that in examples like this, because those boxes are not all equal. The horizontal boxes represent how much? One each, one minute for each horizontal. But how many feet is each vertical box? It's 200. The scale is going to completely determine what the slope is here. And it's so easy to just count boxes and say, oh, look, I rise by one and I run by two, so the slope is one over two. And it's completely wrong. So I'd encourage you, whenever the units are not just ones, don't count boxes. Let's just do a slope calculation. So. Um, how about, uh, let's use the, we can use a point way over here at the end. So let's, we can use the intersecting point if we want to. We've already got that written down here. Fair enough. Let's do that. So the first point that we had for Linda was 0 and 600. And the second point for Linda is the intersection, 16 and 2200. So we can do a slope calculation there. And then once we've got that one, we'll do the same thing for Peter. And once you've got your two slopes, again, check with your neighbors. Actually, after each slope, check with your neighbors. And then write down two equations, one for Linda, one for Peter. All right, so let's write Linda's equation here. Actually, I'll write Peter's first here. Okay, so we're used to the mx plus b form. How much is the m for Peter? It's negative 50 times x. x will be time for us. Plus b, what was Peter's b? 3,000. That right there is the formula for Peter's height. Yes? Questions on that formula? Melanie? Good. Okay, and then the same idea for Linda. What is Linda's M? It's 100 times X plus Linda's B, 600. Those right there are the two equations. So I put the little Peter and little Linda below the y's just so we know which one is which. But they're both y equals. 
questions on either equation? Yes, Evan. Or which points did you use for Linda? It was right there. Okay. Right. Which order did you subtract in? Uh, I, I must have missed a problem. Yeah. So if you get the um, if you get the opposite of the right answer, it means you didn't subtract in the same order on top as you did on the bottom. So either the, those both numbers should both be positive or both negative. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, oh look, the answers are right there. That's convenient. So number four says we're going to take our equations and we're going to do something with them. So what's true, it says using the information from the graph, what can you say about the values for y Peter, Peter's height, and y Linda when the two lines intersect 16 minutes afternoon? What's true about the y values for both of these people? They're exactly the same, right? At this point right here, We've already written it's the point 16 comma 2200. It's exactly the same y values at those two moments. So what we're going to do on the very next page is solve this system. Y equals, you could forget the Peter and Linda now, but Y equals negative 50X plus 3000 and Y equals 100X plus 600. We're going to solve it, but we're going to pretend we don't already know the answer. The answer is 16 comma 2200. We just looked at the graph. But let's do this without thinking about the graphs at all, other than the fact that at that point of intersection, what's true about the heights? They're exactly the same. So the y values are exactly the same. So what we're going to do is substitute. Instead of the y value for Linda, I'm going to plug in the y value for Peter. We're going to substitute. But I don't want to just put y Peter there. What I want to put is negative 50x plus 3,000. So my brand new equation is... I'll copy this thing. So that's Linda's height. That's her y value. Must be exactly the same as substituting in Peter's y value. That's what we're going to solve. So the rest of this is going to be pretty straightforward, but the key here is the substitution idea. Instead of Linda's y value, we put in Peter's y value. Why is that okay? Because at the point of intersection, their y values are the same. Yes, it's exactly the same y for both of them. So it's perfectly legitimate to replace Linda's y with Peter's y. But I don't want to just copy another y over here. What I want to do is copy the thing with the x's. Yeah, because that right there is Peter's height must be the same as Linda's height. So this equation, wait, what happened to my stuff? So this equation right here is the one that we're going to solve. And this equation is much better than the two equations up above because how many variables are in this equation? Just one. We used to have two equations with two letters each, x and y. Now we have one equation with only one letter. Good. So let's solve for x. You've got x's on both sides. You need to group them together. How do we move the minus 50x to the right? We're going to add 50x to both sides. And why don't we go ahead and move the number as well. Do you want to move the 3,000 to the right or the 6,000 to the left? That's that 600 to the left. So subtract 600. I did say 6,000. That was silly. From both sides. And what do we have left? 2,400 over there equals 150x. And then to solve for x, divide by 150. Okay, so we can type that into the calculator. But if you're super smart like me, you just do it in your head like it's nothing. Just like that, I did it in my head. What did I do? I wrote the answer we got before. And the right answer is 16. Okay, so I remembered it. But it's nice that you can get this, right? The calculator agrees. It's 16. So it's wonderful that we get the same answer as the graph gave us. Yes? So we're not surprised. And the idea with this method is that we're going to be able to use it even without a graph, right? It was kind of overkill to do the same problem again. 
but we're confirming the answer that we got from the graph, and from now on, we're not going to need to rely on the graph. Uh, yeah. I think that's it. Yes, Michelle, we need to, we can only do this if the Y value is the same, but every time we're intersecting two lines, it doesn't matter where they are, the Y value is going to be the same at that one point, at the intersection. So it will work every time because the Y value is always the same at that one spot that we're interested in. Yeah, good question. Okay, so let us, I can I go to the next page? There we go. Okay, so uh, this one is almost done. We got x equals 16. What do we still need to find? Still need the y value. We need both x and y. Always need two numbers. So if you know that x is equal to 16, what you're welcome to do is plug that 16 in for this x or for this x, or if you're motivated for both, you'll get the same number for y each time. But let's just go ahead and plug into 1. I'll plug into Peter's. So we get Peter's y value is equal to negative 50 times... We just figured out it's 16 plus 3,000. So type that into the calculator and act surprised. See? Jenny's picking up on the technique. Everybody get 1,600? Or sorry, 2,200, I should say. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so this is the method of substitution. We're going to do two more examples, but the first one we're just going to start. We're not going to do the first one all the way out, but we'll just get it started. Okay, here's the next system. y equals x minus 1, 3x plus 2y equals 13. We're not going to draw the picture. Drawing the picture takes a lot of time, and it involves approximations. But in your mind, I'm expecting you to think, okay, Two crossing lines. And anytime you have two crossing lines, you know that the y values are the same at both of them. So what we're going to do <clears throat> is we're going to take the y value that we've got already here, it's x minus 1, and we're going to substitute it for the other y. We're going to put it right in for this y, right in for this y. So I'm just going to write the second equation again, 3x plus 2y, I'll leave a space, equals 13. Everybody see the second equation? Second equation is 3x plus 2y equals 13. I wrote it, but I put a space where the what letter should be? Where the y should be. And what we're going to do is instead of putting the y right there, we're going to put this y. But instead of putting that y, what are we going to put? x minus 1. So right here in this blank space, we're putting x minus 1. Now, I'm missing something. We need parentheses. We didn't need them before because in the original equation, it was just a single y, and that's a single multiplication. But all that green stuff is supposed to still represent one thing, and it's all being multiplied by two. So it's a little bit tricky, but sometimes you have to bring in your own parentheses even when they weren't needed initially. So we're not going to finish this one because there's nothing new to do from here on out. But is everybody okay getting to that equation right there? Speak now. Okay. So we're just going to say finish this one later, dot, dot, dot. But let's move on to a different one. It requires a slightly new first step for us. And it's right here in number six. Okay. Two equations. 6x minus 2y equals negative 3. 4x plus y equals 5. Again, we're going to substitute. The difficulty here is that we don't have one variable solved for in one equation. In the previous problem that we did right here, we had y by itself. Peter's y was by itself. We substituted in for Linda's y. In the second system, what letter was by itself? y was by itself. Could have been x. Doesn't make any difference to us. We need one letter by itself, so we can then easily substitute it into the other equation. But the problem here is that none of the letters are by themselves. So what do we have to do? We have to get one letter by itself first. So I think it says, I think it says it here, 
Thus, our first step is to isolate a variable on one side of either equation, and then it's going to look like the previous problems. So let's first pick poorly. I'm going to choose to solve this equation for x. You can solve either equation for either letter. So you actually have four different choices to pick from. You can solve the first equation for x or for y. You can solve the second equation for x or for y. Sometimes one of them is much better than the others. That's going to be the case here. But first, let's do it the bad way so we recognize and will want to learn the good way. So if we solve the first equation for x, that's just a completely arbitrary choice on my part. First thing we need to do is move the negative 2y over by doing what to both sides? Add 2y. So we get 6x equals negative 3 plus 2y. Everybody see it? Add the 2y. And then to solve for x, how do we move the 6? Divide by it, right? So we go x equals negative 3 plus 2y, all divide by 6. And that equation is perfectly correct. It's true. And then what we could do is take this thing right here and substitute it to the other equation. It came from equation 1, which means we're going to substitute it into the second equation instead of what letter? instead of x, because this is x equals, so instead of this x right here, we could put all that stuff. So I'm going to write it, and then we're going to stop doing it the bad way. This says 4x plus y equals 5. And instead of x, putting all this stuff that's circled. And then we need the parentheses. We're not going to continue, but that is perfectly valid. And if we solved it, we would get the right answer. Yeah, it's not very pleasant. But first, but does everybody see the idea of substitution is the same as what we've done in the first two examples? And we solved for one letter, it was x. Plug that into the other equation. So instead of x in the second equation, we put all this mess, this fraction. But it's messy. It's because we chose poorly. We had four options. Solve either equation for x or y. There's one letter that's more by itself than any other letter. It's the y in the bottom equation, right? Because it's just a plus y. So how about instead of this, say better, is to take the second equation and solve for y. How do we move 4x? Subtract it from both sides. That becomes y equals 5 minus 4x. And that's it. So not only was it only one step to get there, but it also didn't introduce fractions into this problem. This came from the bottom equation. Where do we substitute it? The top equation. Always go to the other one. So let's plug this into the top equation here. So what I like to do again is uh, is just copy the whole equation, but instead of the y, I'll put a blank space. So this equation says 6x minus 2 blank space equals negative 3. So what goes in this blank space? That's it. Everybody else see it? We're going to replace in this y right here with 5 minus 4x. I've circled it, but really what grouping do we need to bring in here? We need parentheses. Still have some work to do, but We've made a lot of progress getting to one equation with one letter. Any questions on getting to that step? Okay, so if we're feeling good about that, go ahead and solve this equation for x. Don't forget that negative sign is going to come in and distribute. I don't know. Let's see. Uh, that's an 
8, 14, and then, yes, it's good. You folks got x equals a half. And then once you found x, you go back and you find y. Now again, there are a lot of places you can go here. You're going to choose how you're going to find y. But there's one best place. You are welcome to plug in x equals a half into either equation for x and then solve for y. Totally fine. You'll get the right answer. But the best place to go is the one equation where you've already solved for y. It's here. Go ahead and plug in x equals a half to that equation. And whatever you get, whatever arithmetic you go through, will just give you the answer. y equals whatever number you have. So let's do that here. I got y equals 3. Yes. You're finding a way to replace the y so that you can ignore it in the beginning then really find what x is, and then really find what y is. But you're right, Michelle, it's kind of this tongue twister where you solve for one to find the other, and then you find the first one. Yeah. OK, any questions on substitution? All right, let's move on to 7. Where we're introduced to another method to solve systems of equations. This method is called the elimination method. Your book calls it the linear combinations method. Um, you might have also heard it, if you've seen before, called the uh, addition-subtraction method. It's got a lot of names. It's not so important the name. It's important that we know how to do it. So here's a fact that is going to be fundamental to this. Suppose that A is equal to B and C is equal to D. Do you believe you can add the left-hand sides and add the right-hand sides, and whatever you get on both sides will still be the same? Is that fair? Okay. So let's go ahead and jump down here to number 8. 4x minus 5y equals 3, 3x plus 5y equals 11. Before we do the new method, you can absolutely use substitution, the method we've just seen, on that example. Is there any letter that's nice to solve for? The answer is no. If you solve the first equation for x, at some point you're going to divide by 4. Yes? Fractions everywhere. If you solve the first equation for y, what are you going to divide by? Neg negative 5, maybe. 5, negative 5. First, second equation for x, second equation for y. No matter what you do, you're going to involve a big fraction, right? So here's another way. We've already seen up above with y that if you have two equations, you can add them together and get a brand new equation. Let's go ahead and add these two equations just as they are right now. Now, they're lined up col in columns, which is really nice for us. How many x's do you get when you add 4x and 3x? You get 7x. How many y's do you have? zero y's, because negative 5y plus 5y is nothing. And that's what's going to make this work. I'll leave a space, but there's no y's there. Add the right-hand sides, 14. There we go. We added everything straight down the columns. Miraculously, the y's just disappeared, which means we have a single equation with a single letter, just x. So divide by 7, how much is x? What do we still need to find? Still need to find y. Unfortunately, the shortcut I set up above doesn't apply here. There's no equation that says y equals for us to just plug into at this moment. So uh, half of the people at your table plug x equals 2 into the first equation and find y. Other people at the table plug x equals 2 into the second equation and find y. Let's see if we get the same answer. So no matter how you slice it, we get y equals 1. Any questions on? Getting the y? 
there's work to do there. Finding the other letter in this using this elimination idea is more work than finding the second number, second letter in substitution because there's no natural equation you can just go to and zip to the answer. Yeah, Aaron. Yes. Uh, no, it's not that, that it could be 17. It could be anything. Yeah, it doesn't. It's not always this number. Okay, so let me just make sure we're clear on what the answer is. The answer has two parts. The answer is x equals 2 and y equals 1, both things. Right. Last semester in 105, the answer was always x equals. Now it's got two parts. The answer is not done until you have both answers, both numbers. Okay, so what was really nice about the two original equations that made this work? Numbers are small. And the y's canceled out. That was just a coincidence, right? We added the equations. We had seven x's, but the y's canceled. It was perfect. They don't always cancel when you add them up. Let's go to the next page. And we'll take a look at number nine. If we just add these equations, I'll write it down. How many x's do you have when you add the first column? Nine x's. Add the y's. Minus 3y. Don't forget to add the right-hand sides as well. 27. Look, that equation is perfectly valid. The answer that we get is going to satisfy that equation too, but that equation isn't really useful to us because it still has how many variables in it? Two. The goal is to get to one equation with one letter. We just traded two equations with two letters for a brand new equation still with two letters. It's not helpful. It's valid but not helpful. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to try to make it so that when we add the equations, one of the letters perfectly cancels, which means we need something like what we saw down here or one of them was a negative 5 and the other was a positive 5. We need them to be the same number with different signs. So, here's what we're going to do. We're going to multiply the first equation by the right number that's going to give us this canceling. Multiply by some number so that uh, two of these variables have the same number in front but different signs. So, multiplying by 2 is a very good idea because that gives us how many x's? 6 x's which is great because there's six x's down there, but I want them to have different signs. So let's multiply by negative two. And if you don't see why we're doing that, you will. It'll become clear once we rewrite our equations here. So we're going to multiply both sides of that first equation by negative two. It's legitimate to do that. Same thing on both sides. So that negative two is going to distribute. So we get negative six x and then minus 4y. It's very easy to put plus 4y. That's a minus 4y. Equals 36. Negative 36. Really easy to forget those signs. Any questions on that equation? I'm just going to copy the other equation as it is. And now what happens if we add these two equations? The x's drop out. And now if you weren't with us for why we were multiplying by negative 2, maybe you see it now. We looked at the three x's. We said, can we turn it into something to cancel with the 6x? Yeah, we could turn those three x's into negative 6 by multiplying by the right number. OK, so let's finish this. Add the two equations. X's cancel. Very carefully, how many y's? negative 9y's, and over here, negative 27. And then we divide by negative 9, we get y is 3. What do we still need? We need x. You can go back to any equation that's up on the board that has x in it, really any one at all. Personally, I would always go back to one of the original equations because if you made a mistake, like if we messed up when we did this negative 2 times, then the mistake will just carry on through 
if we use one of these equations again. So why don't we go back and use one of the originals? I'll use the bottom one. So 6 times x minus 5 times something equals 9. What's the something? It's 3. We just found it was 3. It doesn't matter as long as you didn't make a mistake modifying one of the equations. Either one is fine. So there's a lot of choices here, which is a good thing, but some students want to say, all right, it's always this rule. Oh, okay, you have options here. So just be comfortable knowing that you have options. And one thing we could do to make sure we did everything right is take the four and the three and plug them into both of the original equations. You could always check. So here's our check. First equation said 3x plus 2y. It's now 3 times what number instead of x? 3 times 4 plus 2y's to what? 2 times 3 equals with a big question mark 18. Easy enough to see whether or not it's true. 12 plus 6, 18. Does that mean we got the whole thing right? No. You got to go into the other equation. All we have is a point that's on the first line. We want to make sure that the point is also on the second line. So we've actually got the intersection. So the equation up there said 6x minus 5y. 6x minus 5y equals with the question mark 9. So plug in the same x and y that we had before. How much is x? That's 4. The y is 3. 24, subtract 15, 9. You don't have to check it, but if you have time and you're taking a quiz or a test, then check. Because if you make a mistake, that's not going to help you find the mistake, but it's going to alert you to the fact there's a mistake. So go back up and try to find it. Any questions on this? Okay. Um, so I wasn't really planning on doing this, but let me uh, let me just give you one alternative to what we just did up above. Can somebody read me the two equations again? Dan, can you read? And the bottom one, Katrina? Thank you. Okay, we made a choice to try to get rid of the x's. That was a good choice. That was the easiest choice we could have made. But perfectly well, we could try to get rid of the y's. So the question is, what can we multiply the first equation by? And then separately, what can we multiply the second equation by so that the terms with the y's are the same number but opposite sign? Yeah, so the goal is to turn the 2 into something and turn the 5 into something, but they have to turn into the same thing by multiplication. And really, we, we call that the lowest common multiple. That's what you're after. What can you turn the 2 into and the 5 into? The 10. You can turn them both into 10. And that's the goal. So how do I take the 2y and turn it into a 10? 5. How does the 5y turn into a 10? Times 2. Yeah, should we put negative 2? Look at the signs right now. One's a positive, one's a negative. I'm happy with that. We'll leave it like that. Okay, so we can write these two. We're not going to carry this all the way through, but just far enough that we'll convince ourselves that we're doing, we're going to get the same answer. So we'll distribute that. 15x plus 10y equals, don't forget to multiply the 18 times 5. Everybody gets multiplied by 5. And the same thing on the bottom. In there. Distribute both lines. And something very nice happens if you add what goes away. The y's. You built it. You worked really hard to build it so that the y's would disappear. So we just add in the front. 27x equals. We add over here. 108. You can type this into the calculator if you wish. What did we get for x before? 4. So completely different, same idea, but different steps to get there. 
I think that doing it this way is harder than what we did up above, because here we had to multiply both equations by something. But we made a better choice up here. We only had to multiply the first equation by something. Any questions on this? OK, so we're going to take a quick look at two special cases, and then we'll do the group thing. So on the very next page, right, we're going to skip the fraction one. We're jumping down to 11. y equals 2x plus 1, y equals 2x plus 3. Before we do the algebra, let's think about the graph. What's the same about these two lines? Slope. What's true about two lines when they have the same slope? They're parallel. What's the solution going to be to these two parallel lines? None. So we're expecting no solution. That's the right answer. But we need to know how to identify it doing the algebra, because maybe it's not going to be so obvious that they're parallel lines when they're given to us. So let's go ahead and do the substitution idea. And I immediately think substitution here because one letter is by itself. The y is by itself. So instead of this y, we're going to put 2x plus 1. So we're going to substitute. So here I'm copying the bottom equation. But instead of the y, I'm putting what the other y is equal to. Does everybody see the substitution we did? Now you have x's on both sides. You need to get them together by doing what to both sides? Subtract 2x from both sides. And then something very strange happens. Yeah, the x's cancel completely. But we do have an equation. What's the equation? 1 equals 3. Yes? So the question is, uh, for what values of x is 1 equal to 3? None. It's a silly equation. Oftentimes when you get a silly equation like that, it means you made a mistake. That's not what it means here. What it means here is that the original system had no solution. So the point of this question is for us to recognize, even if we don't see right away that we're going to have parallel lines and there's no solution, once you get to something ridiculous, no solution. That's the conclusion. That's what you're supposed to look for when you do the algebra, even if you didn't see the parallel lines to start with. So if we're ready, we'll jump to the next page. I think this is written on the next page. OK, who's our reader? Uh, Melanie, did you read? Number 12, please. So if you get a false statement like 1 equals 3, that's the moment to say, OK, this has no solutions. It's inconsistent. Let's take a look at 13. Again, for 13, my gut reaction is substitution because one letter is by itself. So instead of this y in the second equation, you're going to put 2x plus 1. So let's do that. 6x minus 3 somethings equals negative 3. Instead of y, what do we put? 2x plus 1. What else do we put? Parentheses. There we go. Solve that equation for x. What happens to the x's? Cancel. So I got 3 equals negative 3. That's contradiction, right? No solutions. So the problem is right here, right? It's very easy to forget to distribute that negative through. And if you don't, you're going to completely change the answer. So it should be negative 3 equals negative 3. 
which is a statement that's true for any, any x that you pick. So what that means is that these two equations are actually the same line. So there are infinitely many solutions here. Yeah. So you can make them look the same if you rewrite the second one. All right, we'll go to Glenn for 14. Ooh, I don't know what it's supposed to say. The result of applying substitution or elimination to a system, I meant to say system of equations. Okay, thank you. So some vocabulary we saw last time, the consistent versus inconsistent, dependent in this case. Any questions on what to do in the two special cases? If you get one equals three, no solutions. If you get negative three equals negative three, infinitely many solutions. Any questions? Okay, uh, so we're gonna do the group thing, but before we do, let me just jump to the homework real quick. Yeah, right down here. Just jump to page 72 again. <clears throat> so we've seen two algebraic ways to solve systems of equations, substitution and elimination. I'd like you to be good at both. I feel like uh, it's within my rights to force you to use one method sometime and another method another time. So expect on the test that it'll say solve this using substitution then solve this using elimination. The reason I want you to be able to use both is that sometimes one of them is so much easier than the other. If you already have one letter solved for, which method should we use? Substitution. I don't know that I wrote that any place, but it might be worth writing. If you have one letter by itself, use substitution. If the letters, if the X's and Y's are all together on one side of the equation, then it's kind of in a good form for elimination. I'll say it again, I, I didn't write it, but it might be worth writing. If X's and Y's are both on the left-hand side of both equations, try elimination. Okay, so when you're ready, go back to the group activity. It has to do with some fruit. It's there on, right there. <clears throat> 